If you're insulin resistant, this is trouble. The scientific establishment considers the insulin resistance to be pathological. That is, it's a disease. But is it? What if insulin resistance is really a clever strategy to survive tough times? And it's the tough times that make you insulin resistant. Well, we know that surviving tough times depends on having the necessary resources. The immune system produces sophisticated weapons, but these weapons are useless without boots on the ground. And a very famous general once noted, the troops must be fed, starting with the chief of the armed forces, the brain, then the soldiers on the ground, the lymphocytes and macrophages who are the cells doing the actual work. You also need someone organizing the distribution of scarce resources during tough times. So it pays to keep the quartermaster happy. In war, everyone else is expendable. But <laughs> the quickest way to descent is hunger. So you do need to feed the everyone else. But when resources are tight, it's a balancing act. Could this be what insulin is up to? This is what a Chinese computational biologist proposes. Using mathematical models of clinical data, Guan Yu Wang formulated the adjustable threshold hypothesis. Now the central tenet of this hypothesis is that cells don't all respond the same way to insulin. It's an intriguing idea based on the viewpoint that insulin is running the body's stores and when supplies are low, insulin makes a plan. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we contemplate whether insulin resistance is not the ultimate survival plan. Don't worry. I'll skip over the calculus. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heffalumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. So, when supplies are low, it's a good idea to ration the scarce resources. This way the general and his army know they will not be expected to march on an empty stomach and everyone else knows they will not go hungry. Some food will be allocated to service their needs. Of course the level of the need has to be very carefully calculated. So on paper at least each individual gets what they need. Well sort of. Let's be real. You're getting less than you would prefer on a rationing system but you are getting. Postulating that insulin resistance is a rationing system makes sense because let's be honest, in insulin resistance, there's plenty of insulin floating about. The cells choose to ignore the cries of insulin. Instead of responding by assembling the glucose gates, the cells do nothing. And this lack of response is seen as resisting insulin. But what if the cells are not defying insulin per se? What if they're just simply waiting their turn? We know that insulin's principal job is to distribute the nutrients that come in. Since sugar is the most desirable nutrient, much of his attention is focused on sugar's distribution. Privileged cells don't ask insulin for their sugar ration. They simply take what they need because, well, they're essential. If your brain cells don't eat, you're toast. Likewise, the troops don't queue for, for their ration. They are too busy in the trenches ensuring your survival. So insulin only controls the sugar supplies for the less privileged cells, which in body terms is the liver, muscle and fat cells in that order. Now the adjustable threshold hypothesis explains how these cells know when it is their turn. We know insulin interacts with these cells through the insulin receptor. Think of it like a door. Insulin knocks, either the cell opens the door or it doesn't. Biologically speaking, this is an all or nothing response. If the cell opens the door, insulin is able to step through the door and make things happen. 
As I've said, he's rather bossy. The thing that he makes happen is he gets those glucose gates assembled, allowing cells to accept sugar deliveries. To open that door, you need to hear the knocking. So step one is for insulin to knock on the door. Here's the catch. When supplies of sugar are tight, he creeps around quietly knocking on doors where he wants to make a delivery. Now, delivering to the quartermaster or the liver is helpful. Delivering to a muscle cell is a liability. Muscle cells are capable of blowing through large quantities of sugar in minutes. And unlike the liver, they never give it back. This quiet knocking is strategic. Insulin knows a liver cell can hear a pin drop. Fat cells, on the other hand, are as deaf as posts. And muscle cells are somewhere in between. So when insulin is creeping about in stealth mode, knocking on doors, liver cells are quick to respond. Muscle and fat cells don't hear a thing. But when the sugar flows, it's time to distribute the sugar more widely. More insulin is dispatched and we now have knocking in stereo. This knocking can be heard by muscle cells who happily take a sugar delivery. Of course, to get the fat cells to hear insulin is a little more challenging. It takes a couple of insulin molecules knocking and shouting to finally get the fat cells to open their doors and take the delivery. Once all the deliveries have been made, insulin can sit back and relax. Everyone has been supplied. But the situation changes when you're insulin resistant. Insulin still goes about the body, making his deliveries with a knock-knock here and a knock-knock there. He knocks. His knocks have not really changed, but what is happening inside the cell impacts its hearing. Since war is inherently noisy, to make routine insulin deliveries, insulin must knock louder, which requires more insulin to be circulating. It's the tough times that are impeding sugar delivery. It's not insulin's fault. The poor little guy is doing his best under the circumstances. To help insulin make those deliveries, you want to do what you can to fix these. The adjustable threshold hypothesis suggests the solution to insulin resistance begins with a quiet life. So do what you can to live a quiet life and create better body chemistry. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who is battling with insulin resistance? Share this video with them so they know how to support the war effort. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.